Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing how I made my rustic monogrammed books. I used my Cricut to cut out a stencil for each name of our family members and I'll show you a little trick that I have to prevent paint from bleeding through the stencils. And if you're making a lot of books, then you can also use stamps for the monogram names, but I'll show you today how I used a stencil with black paint. My mom was wanting to get rid of some of her books, so she gave me a bunch of her James Patterson books. And you can actually find books at the Dollar Tree, and that would work really well for this project. And I think the Dollar Tree books are cheaper than books that you can find at Goodwill. The first thing I do is take the jackets off of each book. Then I cut out the hardback of the book. It helps to grab scissors and cut down each side of the spine of the book and it comes off pretty easily doing it that way. Then I take all of the pieces off of the spine of the book, and this is the hardest part, just trying to get all of those little pieces off. Next, I take out the first few pages of each book. Then I take some sandpaper to sand down the spine of the books. This will smooth it out some and make it easier to stencil and I do this for each book. After that, I grab my white Waverly chalk paint. This is my favorite type of acrylic paint and I buy it at Walmart and I shake it up and paint the spines of the book and these spines had a yellowish tint to them so the white just makes it look a little prettier and it'll still have that rustic look and I do this for all of these books as well and then while those are drying I'll show you how I cut out my stencil from the Cricut. On each book, I am going to have a family member's name. So I am going to click on text in Cricut Design Space and I am going to go up to font and I'm going to be using Courier New. This is a really good font for farmhouse projects. So I'm going to select this and I'm just going to start typing in each of our names. Okay, so I have all of the names here and I want to make each of them 0.9 inches for the height. So I'm going to click on height over here and I will just change it to 0.9 inches and I'm just going to do that for all three of our names. And I like the letters a little bit closer together, so I'm going to go over to my letter space and just move these in a little bit. Okay, so I brought those in, and for some reason I just feel like this J just looks like it's further apart than the O, S, and H. So I'm going to ungroup this and I'm just going to move my J a little bit closer. And then I'm just going to select all and I might just go to align and click align to bottom just to make sure it's all lined up. I'm just going to select these and I am just going to attach those. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on make it and bring these over to my mat. And then it kind of just arranges it however, but I feel like it's so close that I might try to move some things around a little bit. I might even just move Tim down and then move these over. I'm just nervous about cutting it off. 
Okay, so then I'm going to click on continue. And I have my dial set to custom. And I like to use stencil vinyl for my stencil material. And I have it set to my favorites, but if you don't, you just select browse all material and you just search for stencil vinyl. So I'm going to select that and then I'll show you on my mat how I do this. I am using Aura Mask 813 for my stencil, and you can use contact paper or vinyl for a stencil as well. I place the stencil material onto my mat, load it into the machine, and I have my Cricut cut out the names. Then I take my stencil off of the mat and cut out each stencil name. After that, I weed my vinyl. Since this is a stencil, you want to weed out the opposite of what you normally would, so you want to weed out the letters instead of the background. Then I apply my transfer tape to the stencil. You want to scrape it down really good and then peel off the stencil material with your transfer tape. I place this on my book and then take off the transfer paper. Here's all of the stencils on the books, and this is my trick that works so well since this surface isn't completely smooth, it's easier for the black paint to bleed through. So I will first go back in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I'll put that over the stencil. And by doing this, whatever paint that bleeds will be the same color as that white background. And you don't have to be too careful painting this on. You can do brush strokes um, when you're doing this. And I also make sure that I press down really good along the edges of each letter before I start painting um, this white paint just to help seal it down better. And here's all the books with the white paint, and I let it dry completely before painting the black chalk paint over it. Here I'm shaking up the black chalk paint, and I start dabbing the black paint onto the book. You want to make sure you do a dabbing motion and not a brushing motion. This helps prevent paint bleed as well. And I also recommend not getting too much paint on your brush either. And I decided for these books not to put a full coat of black paint on these. And this will give it um, just more of a rustic look. And then I just continue painting each book. And now for my favorite part, I think it is so fun taking off the stencil, but also terrifying as well. Um, but I let the paint pretty much dry all the way. Um, and chalk paint dries pretty fast. And then I start peeling off the stencil. And I use my weeding tool to take out the rest of the stencil material that doesn't get picked up. And look how cute this turned out.
You can see that I got a little crazy with some of the black paint, so I'm just going to take some more white chalk paint and cover that up. After that, I grab some of my jute string and wrap it around the books and my project is done. If you would like, you can add a sealer over the paint as well. I love how these turned out. They look so cute with a farmhouse style decor and I hope you enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you are new to my channel here and have a great day.